Hey everyone, welcome back to the Dice Dojo Gaming and Painting Studio. Today I'm going to go over some details for the Crisis Protocol release, CP number 46, Mr. Sinister. So, uh, as always, let's start with the model and check him out. The model was fun to put together. Uh, I know a few people that had a little bit of problems getting everything formed out, but overall I was pretty happy with mine. Again, I paint most of these with a contrast, Citadel contrast paint line. Really gives a nice white undercoat, gives it that nice comic book pop. Um, I put down some metallics uh, on his outfit here and then use the blues to kind of get a nice metallic blue effect so it really just kind of help pop through there. Um, let's use the Citadel. Uh, what is this here? Citadel Tezzeret Glow uh, paint line to get a nice green effect. He's got this like little portal thing here. Um, some smoke coming out. Uh, personally, I wish they would have given us the option to have a leg that wasn't coming out of the portal. I like the portal. It kind of tells a narrative. I like the models that tell a story. But uh, I wish they had just given us something that didn't necessarily have that if I was, you know, just choosing. Overall, though, pretty cool model. Nice posing. Pretty villainous. Pretty uh, pretty scary looking. Uh, again, zoomed in here. Doesn't look so great. But again, I'm painting these to a tabletop standard. On tabletop, looks pretty cool. And uh, sometimes people can be a little harsh on themselves. This model, I think, lends itself to painting. Gives a lot of opportunity for different stuff. So, you know, don't overdo it. Don't worry about every little thing. That's not what we're here to do. So, as far as the tokens... Um, you've got some different tokens here for Mr. Sinister, and you've got these chain link tokens, and then you've got these uh, DNA extraction tokens, and we'll check that out when we get to his abilities and kind of see what those are for. So let's take a look at the card. So Mr. Sinister, uh, you're going to see 6 health, medium speed, size 3, threat cost 4, uh, physical defense 3, energy defense 3, mystic defense 4, it's got a basic strike, which is energy, range 3, which is always nice, 5 dice. After it's resolved, character gains power equal to damage dealt. So energy, range 3, 5 dice builder, pretty good. Genetic splicing, this is going to be a beam 4, 5 dice, 1 power, so it does cost, but not much. Genetic extraction, after each attack has resolved, this character gains 1 genetic sample token. After the attack's resolved, doesn't require dealing damage, because he's just learning little tricks and getting in there and doing his thing. Next one, uh, Mystic Attack, this is... Area, star, six dice, six power costs. So this is his big whammy. Range's attack is equal to the number of genetic sample tokens this character has, which you feed from the genetic splicing. You get a crit, a swirl, and a hit genetic burst. After this attack resolve, each enemy character within range of this attack suffers one damage. So if you get that off, everybody in range, which you can have you know, several of, can be pretty crazy. We'll go over that in just a minute here. Okay, uh, so next up. Engineered Perfection. Remove any number of genetic sample tokens from this character. Remove one special condition from this character for each sample removed. The superpower can only be used once per turn, so for zero cost, he can pull tokens to remove shake effects. Pretty nice. Genetic Negation. Choose an enemy character within three of this character and remove one genetic sample token from this character. If you do, chosen character gains a root special condition. So for one power, he can give people root and you just get rid of one of his tokens. Choose an enemy character within three and advance that character short. The superpower can be used once per turn. Such fun little play thing. So it's a little mind control type ability, that sort of thing. Next up, we've got Molecular Regeneration. This character would suffer damage. It may use a superpower. Remove any number of genetic sample tokens from this character. Reduce the amount of damage suffered, one for each sample removed. So it doesn't cost any power. He gets rid of tokens. They can soak damage for him. Last one, DNA Database. So this character may have a maximum of three genetic sample tokens. So what that means is this could be an Area 3 attack that you could trigger six dice and get this big burst. Pretty cool there. And then he's got Flight. Uh, as he flips over, the only major change that you're going to see there, he goes from six health to five health. Some pretty cool art on the back. Okay, uh, this character comes with... Uh, crisis card here this one's pretty interesting so this is legacy virus cured setup e three legacy tokens score one for each cure held by a character during the cleanup phase uh, you're probably going to see this one played a lot and this is definitely a gotcha so be aware of this card interact with legacy cure um, a character may spend one uh, if it's holding to interact with it at the end of the character activation if it's holding one or more legacy cures it may want to remove one special condition so it lets you shake conditions it's pretty nice here's the big thing though if at any time a character is holding all three legacy cures, you can immediately KO that character. It's controlling player scores eight victory points. Remove all legacy cures from the game. So you pick up all three, you know, and there's a pretty quick uh, silverish looking dude running around these days. Pretty fast at grabbing objectives. You grab all three, 
boom, you bit him out of there, eight points. That's a halfway, you know, playing 16, that's a halfway victory in the game. Just saw a major tournament where a player got this off on somebody else and skyrocketed ahead of him, uh, you know, at our local scene. Okay, the big things here. First one, forced extraction. Mr. Sinister may spend one power play this card up to three allied, other allied characters within range three of him suffer one damage. He gains genetic sample tokens, so you can feed yourself genetic sample tokens off your allies. That's okay. Here's the big one that you're going to see, and this is kind of the spicy piece everybody's been interested in this character for this reason. During any cleanup phase, an allied Mr. Sinister may play this card, and this is Cloning Banks. When this card's played, set it near the battlefield instead uh, of discarding it. During your cleanup phase, including the one in which this is played, Mr. Sinister may remove any number of genetic sample tokens from himself to this card, so you kind of shuffle them to a sideboard of this card. If this card has been played during any power phase, you may remove any number of genetic sample tokens from this card and discard it. So once you do that, it's discarded, so it's a once per game ability. You set this card to the side and start feeding into it. Once you've done that, it's gone. If you do, any unused character from your roster with a threat value equal to half the number of genetic sample tokens removed or lower into play within one of an allied Mr. Sinister. The unused character gains three power and is now part of your squad. So this is pretty cool. Um, this lets you bring in somebody. This is kind of a summoning if you're from 40k background. Um, you're going to get to pull one of your characters that's in your roster though that's not in play. So again, you're going to kind of have to build your roster with this in mind, which just shows a little more depth for the roster. Um, you know, options for there. Are you definitely going to see, I think you're going to see that new Crisis card, and you're definitely going to see, if you see Sinister, you're going to see the cloning banks. People are excited about that, and they want to incorporate that stuff. And anytime you can add a character, you know, let's think about a 20-point game where I can bring in a three-point character. That's a, that's, that's a nice improvement. A 14 point game where I bring in a three point character now as you can I mean percentages you know we're talking math which at the end of the day is what these numbers are um, if you're focusing on that type of game that's a really powerful play obviously narratively this dude's cloning and pulling samples and whatever else of building clones you know he's stepping out of a clone bank so that's pretty cool it fits the fluff I honestly don't know a lot about the character but I like bad guys, so I'm probably going to try this guy out and being able to like summon someone in or something like that. It's pretty cool. I really like it's tied to a card that keeps it once per game. It makes it interesting because you've also got to take that as one of your card selections. So like any of the cards, your opponent can kind of play for that. You can kind of play around it, and there's this dance you can I'd like to thank you for tuning in today. Uh, if you're enjoying the video, please like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing Mar Marvel Crisis Protocol. Uh, products as they're coming out. We just got a bunch of new releases in today. I'm pretty excited about those, so look for those in upcoming reviews. Uh, let's just say that there's uh, there's tacos involved. Well, and chimichangas.